Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're back out on the water after a few months hiatus waiting on some parts for our boat. So today we're going to be trolling south from Hillsborough Inlet. Uh, see what we can get along the reefs here and then maybe head out a little bit deeper and troll back north. Uh, if we don't have any luck then, we'll switch over to some bottom fishing and drip fishing and then we'll go from there. Uh, to get started, I'm going to show you guys our setup and how we do it. Christian's going to captain the boat, keep us from hitting everybody else. There's tons of boats out here today because the waters are zero to one foot seas. Um, but yeah, let's go have a great day and uh, we're going to take you along with us. So thank you for watching and uh, let's catch some fish. Generally how I get started is I run one pole back probably as far back as I can, like maybe 500 feet or so. Uh, this is just a little um, little tuna jig. We saw, uh, who was it, the Florida Fishing Couple? Uh, Dan, Captain Dan, he yep. swears by this thing and we have actually caught a lot of fish off of it, so appreciate the tip there. Uh, but generally we run this out. I'm running like a pin uh, Spin Fisher 6 uh, to 7500 series and running off a heavy rod here. So we're gonna go ahead and start rolling this back and right now we're creeping at about five miles an hour. Uh, again, we're heading south against the Gulf Stream and a little bit rough because some boats coming through and they just felt like they weren't close enough. And one good way to do this is just to count while you're setting it up there. I'm on 20 now. And so I may count to about around 100 and then I'll probably just pull it back in. So now we're pushing on 30. Now, one thing you always want to do is you always want to start with your furthest pole back and you just kind of stagger them. Start with your furthest, then your next furthest, then your next, and so on until you get closer. And also too, the deeper you go, the closer you want to have that one. That'll allow you when you're turning and you're trolling and kind of doing your figure eights and stuff so that your lines don't get too crossed. We're gonna to try to run five lines right now. So we're gonna run two down, uh, two out on the sides, and then this one all the way straight back. So for this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and get it rigged up and then uh, show you what we're gonna be fishing off this side here. So on this one, we're just gonna roll this little daisy chain back. Uh, actually, only the last one actually has hooks on it. Uh, so we're just gonna run this one back. Again, not quite as back as far as we just went with the other one. And then on the other side, we'll run another one back pretty similar to this. Uh, and again, it'll be closer than this one is. This one, I'm running a pin squall 16B, running on a seven foot uh, heavy pole here. I believe the pole is a Talavera. I believe this is a Shimano product. Yes, it is a Shimano product. Similar setup on the outside, same thing, a pin squall, 16B S. Uh, again, running off of, this is a two-piece rod here. It's again, it's a seven foot. Uh, one of the, a, a less expensive rod that we picked up off Amazon. I'll make sure I share all the information about our equipment in the description below. But on this one here, again, we're gonna run out the side as well. And this one, we're gonna run a very similar daisy chain to the other side. Uh, this one's pink in color. Both these have done pretty well for us. Hopefully they're not too knotted up here. We can get some good amount of water here. All right, so this is the one that we're gonna be running over here on the starboard side. And again, we're gonna run it back, just not quite as far as we ran the others back. So next we're gonna run our two bent butt rides. Generally what I do is I'll run a planer on this side and then just some type of lure on this one. So because the lure is not gonna go down as deep, we're gonna run it next and then we'll finish up everything with the planer. So what we're gonna be running here is a Wahoo lure. I uh, forget the name of it, but um, seen them online. Everybody seems to do fairly well with them on YouTube. So we've got two sizes. We've got this one and I think one a little bit smaller. 
So, uh, you know, the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish, we're gonna try that philosophy out. So, we'll go ahead and get this one set up. To make hooking these up easier, I'm using these little uh, barrel swivels with the cl uh, clip on it, and it just makes switching out your lures a lot easier. I haven't really noticed that it scares any fish away. I mean, honestly, if you can run wire this far down just to try to keep them getting cut off, this isn't gonna mess with them either. Plus, with that swivel, lets it spin around and do its thing without really twisting up your lines. We're gonna go ahead and run this one back, and then uh, we'll get started on the next one. So we had a fish on, but we lost it. So now I'm actually gonna do the bent by ride, the last one. And so we'll get that rigged up. We're gonna rig this one up with a planer, which is a little bit more challenging. So on this one, we're gonna run a sea witch and then I'm gonna put a piece of a bonita strip on there and see if that doesn't get them fired up as well. So these are some bonita strips that we cut the uh, last time we went fishing. And so generally what I do is I wrap this up around the hook, mark where it's gonna go through. All right, so that's our bonita strip. And that's going on the end of this. And then that just goes out there and catches us a wahoo or something, hopefully. We use a wind on leader, which means that we just hook these in just like that, and then when we're ready to pull it back in, we don't have to hand reel it so much. All right, and that's our setup. So now, what we're gonna do, just sit back and show for a little bit, and then uh, hopefully, we'll have fish on here in just a few minutes. It's us again. So uh, we trolled up and down the coast there in about 70 to 140 foot of water. Uh, there was a lot of boats and we only had one bite and it got away. So now we are about 15 miles off and we're gonna try uh, hitting some spots here that we picked out last time we were out a few months ago and we had some really good luck. So we're gonna try that again today. Um, so just wanted to update you guys while we are changing things up. I am gonna change to running a skirted rigged ballyhoo. Yeah, with the Islander lure. And I'm gonna be running that off of the Squall 16B off of the starboard side. 
And then I'm not sure if I told you guys which reels we use for our bent butts. And we use the uh, Pin Squall 50 uh, BSWs. And so, yeah, so that's our plan right now. We're gonna keep those rigged the same. Uh, the only change that we've made really is to this one over here on the starboard side, and that's just to run the uh, rig skirted valley here. So uh, wish us luck. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot one more time. And then if we don't have any luck now, uh, we will head inshore and just start drip fishing from the bottom and uh, running some live baits on top because we do have uh, we got a couple dozen uh, pilchards so we'll put those to work for us a little bit later when we get tired and just decide to sit down. <laughs> All right, we'll keep you guys updated. Let's catch some fish. Yeah, look at him jumping. Public service announcement. Don't steal yeah. Hey, please do not do balloons at your birthday parties and stuff because when you let them go, they end up out here in the ocean. And luckily, we picked them up. But otherwise, it would end up in sea turtles and fish and basically kill all the fish out here. So please get rid of the balloons. There's other ways you can celebrate. That's our PSA. <laughs> All right, so we gave up on the trolling because, uh, well, we did catch a mahi, uh, but we decided to come a little bit closer inshore and start hitting the patch reefs. So we're doing a little drift fishing right now uh, with some live pilchards and some squid. And then we also have a live pilchard just out doing his thing. So uh, we'll keep you guys posted, wish us luck. So on this, I'm running a 40 pound liter and I've just got a little five ounce weight right now. It seems to be all we need. And I've got that hooked to, uh, I forget what this is. I'll post it in the comments. <laughs> I got a fish. But hey, she's on. Stuck 
Ah, it's a little baby grouper. Oh, it's adorable. Look at that. All right. Yeah. It's a mouse. It's simply his mouth. Can I get it out of him? No, that's in the hardest bladder. Oh. Bye, little guy. Let's see. What is he? Uh, Here, so I can get him out of the way or not. Oh, there he goes. Look at that. Wait, just before you let me throw you back. Porgy. What's he got there? Yep, we're coming in. Right. And you got another little trigger. Another little trigger? Yep. Fish mouth, kind of. Yeah. A little one, though. Huh? Do you want to get huh. the fish roll out? Or just Anybody know there? what kind of fish this is? Oh! <laughs> yeah, back at you. All right, buddy. Go back. <laughs> All right, so this is our first uh, catch, clean and cook. So, um, just going to show you guys how we clean this uh, mahi. Um, so everybody does it a little bit different, so I'm just going to show you the way I do. I generally do not peel the skin off, but fillet it off, because I do not like the taste of it when it's peeled off. So, real quick, I just generally clean around here, a quick score. Definitely tell what they were eating. Some little minnows down there. It's pretty disgusting.
Probably the most important thing is that you remember that when you're taking your fillet from your cleaning table to your house, that you spray it off and you use nothing but the finest china that you have. So just a key pointer there. So we're going to test this out on our first catch, clean, and cook. <laughs> catch, clean, cook. Catch, clean, cook. I'll get you saying that one day. So um, now it's time for me to get out of the way and let the Mastro in. So with that, and without further ado. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, so you know we caught mahi yesterday. So we are going to just pan fry black and these today. Let me get that going. All right, um, we also have some zucchini. I'm going to fry up like little zucchini french fries. And then I already have rice cooking, it's just white rice, but we're gonna make that into a cilantro lime rice. So, I already have a lot of this stuff prepped up for us. So I'm here, this is just a fry mix that I've made from before. I just use it for a lot of my fried vegetables. I've got some pan uh, panko crumbs in here with some salt and pepper, that's about it. Uh, this is buttermilk here. I've got some limes already cut up, this one. I've been squishing it up a little bit so I can get fresh lime juice. All right, so first I wanna get my zucchini going just because I know that's gonna take a little bit longer than the fish is and while the pan is frying, uh, getting hot here. I already have my oven set. I got it on broil just because we like crispy french fry zucchinis. 
So I'm first going to throw these in here. Actually, we're going to grab a plate. Sorry for that, that facing you guys. We're gonna take some of these. Take some of this. Get this on a plate here. And again, this is just a fry mix that I've mixed up. It's uh, got some flour in it, salt, pepper, a garlic. I'm sure there's some onion powder in here. Uh, probably a little bit of some breadcrumbs as well. So then these I just like to put on here. Move them around a little bit, get them covered up while I make a mess. The rest of these guys on here. Get them all mixed up. Are you trying to sneak in here? You guys can't see her, but we have Bella over here behind me. Just trying to make her debut. Alright, now that I've made a mess and these are all nice and coated, I'm going to dump them in here, into here, and then onto my pan. So. Here. Just a little soft shake. You don't need a much. Depends on how crunchy you like them. Some people like them crunchy, some some don't. It's all your preference. Preference. Preference? Preference. Alright, so let's get these. And again, I don't have a time when I put these in the oven. I pretty much just watch for the brownness. I don't really like soggy vegetables, so I tend to keep them a little bit uh, crunchier. So what are we having? Blackened mahi, zucchini fries, and cilantro lime rice. Okay. <laughs> Took me a minute to figure out everything we were having. So, all right, with these guys, you can see, I, you can put them on here however you want. Um, I have, again, just the breading on them. They've been in here. Put them on the pan. Got them at 500, it's on broil. Don't forget to put it on broil. So we'll put those in there for a little bit. I'll put them down here so they don't get too crunchy. And again, I don't put them on a time limit. You just gotta kinda watch them. All right, so then we can go ahead and get this fish taken care of here. I'm going to put a little bit of some coconut oil. I'm going to put some coconut oil onto my hot pan here. Hopefully it's hot. All right, so with these guys, all I'm doing here is taking, I already have blackening seasoning. I've had it mixed from before. Um, everybody has blackening seasoned differently, so it's all, again, up to your specific taste. But we already have this mixed up from uh, whenever our last Keys trip was. I know I made, I made that up for this. So I'm just going to mix this up again a little bit more. Um, these have already been patted off, dried, cleaned and everything. So we're going to go ahead and just put that blackening right on there. Just pat it on in. We're a bit of a spicy family, so we like um, ours spicy. Alright, so now that I have this side done, I normally don't blacken both sides because it tends to be a little too much. Um, so one side gets Blackened, the other side gets salt and peppered. Alright, and then we'll just take these guys, flip them right on there. There's your nice little sizzle. Like I said, I like to just salt and pepper this side just because I don't want it to be too overwhelming with the black and easy. So look at a little bit of salt and pepper on here. So we already have some white rice. Nothing special, just white rice. So um, what am I gonna do now? So I'm gonna take. I did put coconut oil in butter when I cooked it. So I'm going to put a little bit in here instead of butter. Make sure that they are not getting too done on one side. So, get a nice coloring on those. Flip those over. I'll go this way. Nice and 
some yummy. Mm. I didn't say so earlier, I have this on a low, like a medium low heat, just cause again, I don't want the fish to cook too fast, but I still wanna catch all that flavoring in the fish. So if I cook it too fast, it will get all the flavoring and it'll just be a cooked dry fish. All right, so then back to this rice. Now I've got some coconut, like maybe a spoonful of coconut oil, depending on if you want a little bit more or not. Um, I'm gonna take, I have this lime, it's nice and juicy. It's been sitting here palming it, trying to get all the juices ready for it. So let's cut that open. And then I'll just squeeze all the lime juices in here. It smells delicious. Wish we could have smell a vision because it really does smell good. All right, let's get the other lime in here. So again, uh, it's just one lime, but half and half. I cut it in half, so. And then this is cilantro. I've already freshly cut it up. Just had it ready to go. I'm not gonna put it all in there just to give it so we can taste it first. How's our fish looking? No, not quite. Oh, well, that one might be done. All right, let's fix. Oh, we got it. <laughs> the joys of being tall. Give <laughs> this a nice spin. Hopefully, that turns out we don't need too much cilantro. Maybe a little bit more. Usually when you're done with it, that's nice herby rice. Well, cilantro along goes well with any fish, I think. So let's see, and I think these are pretty much, yep, falling apart pretty well. So, good job. Oh, that one got a little stuck there. So I think this one should be good. Let's go ahead and take that one out. Get the rest of these moved over a little. Alright, so good. Should probably check these guys. And these are getting nice and toasty. So I'm gonna spin those around real quick. Alright. Zucchini fries out. All right, and then those are what those look like. Nice and crunchy, little fries, healthy fries. And then we'll get our fish off of here. This doesn't overcook. You can tell it's done because it's falling apart. All right. But there you go, guys. So we have our cilantro lime rice. Put it together for you here. On our fancy china. Look at it. Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best for our viewers. Yep, always. All right, so get a little bit of rice on here. All right, let's see. We'll take one of these fish. I'll just get this right here in the middle. This is nice and pretty. Put some fish right on top of there. All right, go grab some of these guys. And there you go, my friends. Put a little bit of some cilantro on top there if you'd like. Giselle? Come here, Giselle. Got yourself a nice little meal. That looks yummy. Huh? So, wish you guys could smell it and eat it with us, but we're gonna go enjoy it now. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.